This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the social medias in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this camera is zoomed in way too tight on me. But we are ready to get geeky with y'all tonight. We got some intelligence on our apples. And only, you know, only, only quite slightly losing our mind on social media this week but uh let's get we have our crew with us first of all from uh i've seen do i i've seen if i have to give her a moment here from the studio duds <laughs> here in pittsburgh pa is katie dudas is with us the daughters what <laughs> you were just national cat day national cat day it's katie, katie, i took all of my calls wearing this today you don't did you oh seriously? <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. You are what are you wearing for those on audio right now? I am wearing um if you have ever seen those little fuzzy uh headbands that you put on bef- like on your forehead to like keep your hair out of your face or if you're washing your face. Uh this is the Halloween version of Hello Kitty. It's got black ears, it's got bow and a big orange bow, but also Hello Kitty's on the side too. If you wanna There she is. Ta-da! <laughs> Very yeah. soft. I, I, yes, I know. I, I, I'm really shocked how how much I'm seeing Hello Kitty uh, somewhere in the in the vein of political commentary lately. Uh, <laughs> so, like they're just like you know the you know the the political uh, uh, comedians are like using it for uh, uh, just reference and stuff. And I it just it I'm like oh and and, and my in- initial instinct like look they used Hello Kitty. I was like no not this topic. No, 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 no. I'm living in my own little Hello Kitty world. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> by the way, pour one out for free pocket camp Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. Did you see that the other day? I guess you can, like, purchase one and bring your stuff over. It still survives, but still, it's just kind of kind of an interesting move for them on Nintendo. Not the same. No, no. So, also with us, uh, Runner Extraordinaire. <laughs> I'm you know, just looking at the clips coming up soon of you running through the thunderstorm from a few weeks ago. Uh, is Dave Potter of the iPhoneography podcast. Good to be here. Sort of good to be here. Yeah, we're we're we're, we're completely saying this this week. Completely saying everything's great. Everything's great. And next week's going to be so great. I'm going to be hiding in the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> so very, very, uh, uh, a very, very well scheduled vacation um that i wish i could bring everybody with me so bad right now so anyways this is the other but this is ponder's like this week is ridiculous and then but he isn't the one who forgot that they signed up for a 10 miler on sunday two weeks before the race katie i i have a little more leeway uh but i did look at my listing i have a virtual uh version for this race this weekend and guess who also signed up for the 10 miler instead of the five I thought you did, because I can't remember if that was what we needed for the trifecta medal, and that's the other reason I'm running this. Okay, and I can't remember yes, why we did this. Do, I thought we were going to train. Me neither. I don't, I me mean, neither. Uh, and guess who hasn't uh, worked out at all in the last week, because they've been under the weather, um, plus plus the plus the dishearteningness that my activity rings completely stopped for like three days, so it looks like mm. I'm dead if you're sharing your rings with me. <laughs> so I'm, well, I wasn't okay. But I'm a lot better than the rings um, said I was for three days last week. So mm. uh, I, I did fill a couple of them, um, uh, uh, a couple of days there. But uh, Apple doesn't know it. So, yeah, no, I had a pretty like I, I had a I had the oh, your watches aren't going to sync with anything and you feel like crap. So you've just given up on life right now. Uh, so that's been me since like about this time last week. Uh, mm. uh, situation. So I'm coming out of it a little bit better. Uh, I do have a cough button here, so if I disappear for a little bit, um, that's that's why. Uh, but I'm I'm almost I'm almost I'm on I'm on the come up. I'm definitely on the come up on this. Uh, so um, let's get into our awesome things of the week. It's the awesome thing of the week. It's only awesome because it's in my hand. 
Um, so actually, uh, you know, our friends, Extra Life, uh, well, actually my brother and, and, and his friends and uh, were here last week and did a takeover on Wednesday through Thursday. Uh, thank everybody that contributed to that. You can still contribute with the links over there. Uh, the live stream is over mm-hmm. on the Sorgatron Media and Awesome Cast. Actually, we streamed on every platform that we had to try to get in front of people. Um, I talked to our sound trainee guy at the Thursday night. And he says he fe- he fell asleep to it. He watched it for like from like midnight until three a.m. until he dozed off. Just just had it on for like you know room stuff because I had like some some like low some copyright free music and I just put it on the room and I had a couple of the streams up that they were running here uh, and I went home to bed. Uh, so I it's so I you know it was cool to see that people were watching. But I was given uh, my friends work my 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 brother and my sister in law work at Walmart and they sometimes they bring me. I have a stack of uh, for instance um, Apple. Uh, AirTag keychains. If any friends need any, uh, I have like six of them now. Uh, but also, uh, they gave me this thing. Uh, we talked about this a while ago, Katie. This is the Tile um, Lost and Found labels, the little QR code stickers. I've not opened these yet, but I was very interested in them, and I thought they could be fun for some things that um, you know are a little too small to put like a Tile or AirTag kind of situation in. Uh, there it is, a little close for yes, yeah, yeah. On clearance for five dollars, by the way. They have it labeled as uh, it was nine eighty eight. These, these retail online for about fifteen dollars uh, for a pack of these. And this is um, so there's a lost and found stickers. There are ten labels, sticker labels. I have not even opened this, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that. I mean, I, okay, there's stickers, so I'm not I'm not expecting anything real exciting out of this. Um, I'm always interested in, now. Tile is something that is going to um, you know if you're not familiar with Tile, uh, think what think what Apple tags replaced, right? And uh, you can pull this guy out here, and you do get a little. Uh, you got you got your little labels, a couple of a couple little label pads here. I feel like I, well, I I I guess it doesn't matter if I show these or not because they're going to be labeled to to something. You download the Tile app and you connect your uh, your information to this, and they're showing it on like water bottles and things like that. But I could see putting this on like you know maybe cameras themselves or cases or other little things. Uh, especially maybe expensive things that I may have in my camera packs and things like that, that, you know, like, like, like Katie, I could see this kind of being used on like lenses or something for a lost and found situation. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Like, like, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully, hopefully your expensive lenses uh, ended up in the hands of somebody that, that would be, uh, go through the process. But I feel like if you put on tech items, there's more, um, opportunity that people will find it, know it and, uh, uh, know what, what these are. Right. Uh, so, and if you look at them, they do say, uh, a scan if found, um, all over it. So, and then I'll pop up something on your, um, and just for funsies, uh, I know these aren't registered yet, but I'm wondering what will happen if we do, um, kind of, uh, uh, do, do a quick, uh, kind of thing just as a little, um, uh, experiment here. So let me, give me one second so I can throw this up over on the screens. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me. So we'll do a live demo here of sorts. I, I, and again, I didn't send any of these up. Uh, so if you go here, you're going to scan one of these guys and it goes to a tile, a, a tile site and brings that up. Oh, and it does go into and here, go into the app and everything like that. Obviously it's in a setup mode and it'll tell you to download the application. Uh, so, it, so, you know, what you're paying for here, it seems like, oh, you're paying like 10, $15 for a bunch of stickers and QR codes. Why can't I do my, do it myself? I, I think the biggest thing here is you're paying for like, you know, tile, your information is going to be in the tile service. So again, if tile goes away, so does your information. It's kind of like the QR code, uh, QR code problem we've had in the past when you're going through a service or something like this, but it does actually, uh, help, help with something like that. So, um, I've had a tile in the past and no, not even a tile. I think I had those skull candy headphones, right. That use tile as part of it. Um, so that, that was kind of an interesting, interesting process there, but it just seemed like, Anytime, it's one of those things that didn't work when you really needed it to. Um, so Oops. that's one of the reasons why I didn't go away from it. Uh, and, and, and if you're talking about Tile itself, the biggest issue is not every phone has a Tile app on it to pick up on something like this. Whereas like an iPhone and all those things will allow, you will, you know, I think Android devices, don't they pick up on AirTags as well now as part of the network, if I'm not mistaken? Mm-hmm. So like you have kind of a, a, a wider situation there. All right, now that I've done this, let's see what happens when I uh, bring this up. So if you go in here, uh, no, it's still looking for the app. <laughs> okay, it actually loads in the app, and it does give you, nope. choose a category, what is it going to be? Um, I'm going to say, you know, hey, let's put on my glasses or something like that. 
save and continue. And then you can put in your uh, information and the message you want to come back to the person from there and save and continue. And that will be linked to that sticker that you put on the item. So that should be uh, that should be a pretty cool thing for you. So I, I don't know, you know, Katie, do you see this being useful? Um, you know, very specific things. Like, again, I just I think it's just something, you know, for things um, just it's hard to put air tags on. It might be another option, right? Yeah, I wish they were. I mean, they wouldn't work for lenses because there's not enough smooth surfaces to put them on. Um, right, that, right. that would work because I thought about that. I was like, oh, man, I was like, no. Um, but no, I think I think at least it gives I don't know. It's like if found lost tags, and I feel like they help them. I hope I, I don't know. Like I feel like somebody hopefully would see that and be like, "Oh, this mm -hmm. is somebody's thing." Because I mean, even it sounds awful, but like lens caps, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like they're like wandering around. I mean, we were doing, we were covering that uh, that event, and it was like we found a lens cap. Whose lens cap is this? <laughs> Yeah, and it's just like, we know this is important. We know this is just something expensive. Please recover your lens cap. We feel for you right now, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what about <laughs> yeah, you, Dave? Do you have any options? you have any things you'd like to throw these on to? Um, you know what? I don't travel that much where I don't think this would be useful for me, per se. Mm -hmm. um, since they're not really tracking, it's more if you lose it and then someone finds it. Yes. But I would say the advantage if you do, let's say, travel a lot or, you know, have something that you would be concerned like that. And you, as you were saying, you know, could you make your own, could you make your own QR code, print it out, print it out on stickers, yeah, yeah. make a website? Yeah, you could do They've all done that. it for you at this point. But yeah, exactly. And, it, and well, you, since they're in your hand, I'm assuming that mm -hmm. the stickers are a little plasticky. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're not just, they're not just straight paper. They're not just straight paper. They seem to be a, bit, a little bit higher quality. It actually says on here, uh, stick your, uh, there was, there was, I don't know if it was on this or the other thing that says it's, uh, uh any of their recommendations for this is perfect for water bottles, textbooks, tablets, lunch boxes, sports equipment, instruments, ID cards, luggage tags, and much more. Um, there was, uh, I, maybe it was on the website I was looking uh, it says that they, you know, they they were resistant a little bit more mm -hmm. um, to, you know, peel it, stick it, find it. So they're higher end yeah. stickers that they're going to take a little more. They're water exactly. resistant and things yeah. like that too, right? So. Yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a convenience and it's a big help. And if you're that concerned that it may get wet after you stick it on, get some clear tape and put it over top. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You so. know, but I can definitely see, like, especially you guys where you travel, you have all this gear. Mm -hmm. And you're generally around people when you're at the event who are not just going to pick up and run with it mm -hmm. because you're at an event. You have a captive audience, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that I could definitely see, you know, if there's if it's a lens cap that doesn't detach, but still attached to the outside of the lens by like a little dongle cord or something, I could see putting it there. I don't know how lens caps are on the high end lenses if they're, you know, screw off and then easy to easy to lose type things. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I think it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's that kind of thing. I mean, it, this is low level situation. Yeah. Hey, be nice if it has it back. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need to know exactly where it is all the time. So maybe right. don't put it on your camera. Unless, I mean, I, you know, honestly, I can see throwing it on a GoPro. You know, who's go, I don't, uh, uh, Katie, how many GoPros, like, like whose GoPro is this that we found on the track on Baja, right? You know, like mm -hmm. something like that. And I've been trying to figure how to mark those, honestly. Uh, so other than just getting really small sidekick media services ones, um, but that, that could be in, well, even these, actually now I'm looking at these, these are still even a little too big for that too. So, uh, but there you mm -hmm. go. Lost and found labels, uh, from tile, actually a, a correction. So I, this is a, this is a pack of 10 labels. Um, the labels, I, I don't see how much are in a pack themselves. But but it says that it's a three pack for uh, fourteen ninety nine. I don't know if that's three of these sheets or three of these like ten packs. Uh, you know, kind of situation mm -hmm. there over on the website. I'm I'm uh, thinking it's three of the sheets. I'm think I'm kind of thinking two. So you know, because it says three pack, it's showing three different color sheets. It is, it is. And then this was a this is this had two sheets in it and it retailed for ten. So I guess it's about five bucks per per sheet or so. Mm -hmm. like that. But again, keep an eye out. They were on clearance in uh in uh you know in the clearance aisle over in uh um well the Bell Vernon Walmart at least so uh, a bit ago. So definitely worthwhile. So go check that out. Yeah, that's my awesome in hand thing of the week, I suppose. Uh, Katie, what's your awesome thing of the week? 
Did I catch her on the mute? I was like, oh no, I muted. Um, it's a cloud. It is actually multiple clouds. So I would, you know, I do a lot of calls. And something I was noticing was, I'm going to try to do it now, is like my shirt was always wonky and my shoulder was down. And I'm like, what's, what's happening? And I kept having to fix my shirt. I was like, why is this down? And I was realizing that I had like the wrist guard on like the squishy at the bottom of my mouse, but I had nothing in front of my keyboard. So then I found these beautiful clouds. <laughs> um, <laughs> like this looks like an intestine like this. <laughs> but they are beautiful clouds, multicolored clouds um, that go un like in front of my keyboard. And then I've been using the one with my mouse. So now I'm like a little bit more even and not so much like, wonky with things which i'm excited about and um it uh, and it also came with a um what is it called uh the little thing you put your hot drinks on uh coaster <laughs> that i also have used and liked but um yeah i i was like a pretty simple solution and it's from amazon it was like 18 bucks 17.98 now mm. and uh the reviews are like a 4.7 with 748 reviews i'm like okay there's a few different versions always you know whenever you go on there finding different things but it is no skid um because it's not like it's a little tacky like it's not sticky but it's that little bit of tacky at the bottom of this thing so it's not going anywhere <laughs> you can see my screen um so it's nice of that and like i've definitely have noticed that like oh i'm not so off kilter and also like this is nice for my wrist and it's also making me think i need a new keyboard because um my keyboard's a little too flat for this so darn mm. i'm gonna have to buy a cute keyboard very sad <laughs> <laughs> wait what's your keyboard now then or you just got like a it's normal just... apple one or yeah it's like the, the, this thing oh just a, oh and, that flat white and then it's on a, it's on a thing like oh, okay. a clear but it's not enough like it just needs a little bit more and and like i have definitely i've lost several keys on here like the e key is pretty much <laughs> just I, gone um you understand yeah oh i understand <laughs> i uh i had i had to find a uh, keyboard for uh for for a project on on thursday nights uh for a new system we were setting up and i was like okay i need to give them a keyboard that i'm not going to be sad if it doesn't come back and it was like an apple keyboard probably from my 20 2007 iMac Ooh. it's missing like an enter key and the shift doesn't work on the one side and I made the guy like do like a crazy uh password for that I generated and I was like oh there's no wonder this doesn't work <laughs> you know so but you know it, it was it, it gets the job done for for the week to week so um yeah so uh that's awesome so that is the uh well oh, geez how do I G key of uh, it's a, yeah, you're not going to pronounce it. upgrade leather cloud keyboard wrist rest. Uh, we'll have a link of course, as usual. Yeah. Uh, here Go with wrist rest. And I like the comfortable memory foam mm -hmm. is the kind of, I like that material cause there's a bunch of different materials, but I like that one and it's squishy and it comes in a bunch of different colors. Awesome. Go check it out. It's over on Amazon. Be cute. Okay, real quick. Yes. It's talking mm -hmm. about the base. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. it says, non slip PU base. What no do you use? Yeah. Okay. So it's, just, <laughs> okay. Like, it's like a rubbery. Oh, okay. Like it's, it's like a little okay. bit of a, like it's not sticky, but it's just like a little, mm -hmm. a little latexy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I just didn't know what what they meant by pu. It literally it does not smell. Letter p, the letter u. <laughs> no stinkies. Yeah, I wonder what that is. <laughs> yeah, because when they show it on the website um it's like the fourth image uh was it one fifth image down they show like latex being tapped from a tree mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's like maple syrup but latex mm. no i will i don't know <laughs> it's kind of sticky but not sticky <laughs> like it's yeah <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Potter. Oh, yeah, there we go. Potter, what's your awesome thing yeah. of the week? Uh, well, the fact that, and I don't think a lot of people realize this, there are actually two crewed space stations up currently. What? Yes. Of course, you have the International Space Station, mm -hmm. which is kind of the big one um, due to be deorbited uh, seven, eight years from now. Mm -hmm. Um. No plan to replace it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, however, China has their own space station. Because they didn't want to be involved with the International Space Station and 
get complicated with working with other governments. So they have their own space station. They have their own crewed flight people that go up, stay in the space station, come back down. And they just launched their um, uh, a resupply mission. And you know, with their first and only female spacecraft engineer. Hmm. And it's pretty neat the fact that um no nope, actually is it launching okay yeah, yeah it looks this, like this, it this did is a, this a previous yeah. video i'm earlier in it i'm just okay. looking for interesting things here's the launch sequence here yeah actually so but, but it's it, 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 unfortunately it's hard to especially this time this time of year when there's other things which are in the news. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get news that talks things about outside the U.S. Yes. If you're in the U.S. or outside, you know, an area. And, I, you know, I still think some people would be shocked to know that there is a space station up there. Mm -hmm. The International Space Station. And there's one that China made. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting to see people's reaction if, you know, you go up to... Oh, did you know China launched a supply to its own space station? Where, you know, in the past, it, it is like, well, we have our space station, you have your space station, and what are they doing? And most people are kind of oblivious to things happening up there. Yeah. And it just, to me, it's a positive thing. No, no, you know, it, it is, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, it, it keeps, I keep going back to the uh, for all mankind. Uh, kind of thing mm -hmm. <laughs> it comes together with these things um you know it it, it you know it, it, it is you know obviously china's kind of a different scenario where um uh, uh you know we were like oh we have to do third-party com com companies in order to you know be able to do our supply missions and things like that and you know well china doesn't have to do it. it's like well you know china they probably didn't have much of a choice uh in, in that environment <laughs> so and they have a more concerted effort for some reason too and, and probably less bureaucracy for it um, that is not a positive necessarily, uh, but maybe in this case, but, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, and of course you had to go to space.com to get your China news, uh, on what's going on there. But no, I, you know, the, and even, even you can look at it like, oh no, China's doing this. You know, if you are, uh, kind of in the no, you know, they are the enemy kind of mode of things too, but also that hopefully motivates people to do more here too. Uh, so, and, and, yeah. and if this, uh, invigorates, you know, and reminds us that there is a space race going on for whatever is out there, um, you know, maybe that'll light a fire under, uh, or a rocket under, uh, uh, others to get some more done here, or, or at least maybe even people that in the government to be, to put behind something like this. Yeah. Well, or, you know, you hear about, like you said, about private industry being mm -hmm. launching SpaceX, um, no one's there's not a lot of private industry trying to develop its own space station. No, just rockets. Uh, right mainly now. because the economics just in commercial, a strict commercial, mm -hmm. uh, it's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not there. This is and the, the space station is not luxurious. No, there are little tubes. Mm -hmm. You know, literally they're they're modular where they kind of come together, connect together, and you just kind of build it out piece by piece. Right. Uh, so you're not talking a luxury hotel in this in, in, in orbit. No, no. This so, is the, we're, we're still in a very functional thing, not what you've seen on television or anything like that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. However, I, I did look up to get um, how big this thing is. Um, it is approximately 150 feet long. And the space station. Uh, the, the 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 Chinese space station. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going than I thought. Uh, yeah, it's 150 foot long and around 120 feet, they say, in diameter. Okay. So it's kind of in two directions, if you will. But, with, you know, there's three people up there. There uh, maximum of six can be up there. Mm -hmm. It was launched in 2021. So it's been up there for over three years. Is this their first space station up there? Permanent. It's their first permanent. They had two um, experimental ones up mm. just to see if it would work. So they could say they basically launched two different um, spaceships up and made sure they could dock properly and right. people can go. But that was more of a test. OK, so it was more of let's see if we can get this to work. And then they made the. Um, the per more permanent space station. 
Well, there you go. That's your science minute. Last, last, last week it was pulsars. This year, this week we're uh, learning about mm-hmm. China in space. And you guys, thank you so much. Uh, again, a programming note: we do don't have anything scheduled the next two weeks uh, because uh, between um, a vac- <laughs> I scheduled a vacation for reals this time, and um, and uh, it, it, to which we will be hopefully no work happening. Uh, and, uh, and then we have, uh, some work down in Florida that we'll be doing here in two weeks. So it, it is not feasible for us to do any kind of live shows or anything like this. Um, I don't know if I'll bandwidth to be doing any kind of pre tapes or anything like that either. Uh, hopefully we can bring you something here. Like we are, uh, we do have some plans for mayhem show. Uh, so if I get a bright idea in the next 24 hours, you'll have something next Tuesday night to watch. Uh, if not short, uh, but anyways. But thank you, everybody, that does support the show and helps us keep it going, helps us sit in here trying to figure out what we do, what we can serve to you when uh, we are physically unable to, uh, or even get me up and, and, and at this when I'm maybe not feeling the greatest, uh, <laughs> for instance. Uh, but thank you, everybody, that does support the show at the Coffee Club level, Cynthia Klosky at the Fan Show level, Michael Fedor, John Nagore, and Dave Ponder. You guys support the show, too. We do have a Patreon feed where you do get all the... You know, how the sausage is made when we don't have the graphics up and everything uh, over there while we're getting ready for the show or if we're doing any uh, post-Patreon kind of activity. Uh, you get that there first before we uh, clip it off for everybody else uh, on the Patreon, too. So go check us out, patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into the news. Yep, yep, it's the news. There's a lot of Appleness going on here. I guess we can get into um. <laughs> New Mac Minis dropped, and I understand they are adorably bite-sized. Yes, they 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 have shrunk them. They shrunk we're, them. We're, yes, they we're put them the in the previous. dryer. They, they, honey, I shrunk the Mac Mini. Oh no! <laughs> uh, where the previous Mac Minis were uh, like seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter, mm-hmm. these are only two inch. By, oh, I'm sorry, these are five inch by five inch and two inches high. Okay. Yeah. So they are quite, they, they, you know, they're really small in terms of pick, taking up desk space. Mm-hmm. Um, as Apple tends to do, they bump everything up and they keep the price the same as the previous version. Uh, they did add ports to the front. So there are two uh, USB-C ports in the front mm-hmm. and a headphone jack. Ooh. Ooh. And in the back... You have three additional USB ports that are also, um, oh, what, what's that? They're Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, thank you. I almost said Firewire. Mm-hmm. Thunderbolt. That's important. Also, also HDMI mm-hmm. and a wired ether, uh, Ethernet port and the power port. So the only difference is you've lost your uh, USB A's in this one, um, mm-hmm. and the headphone jack isn't um, unfortunately underneath the USBs like it is in the. Uh, which I I I don't know, Katie, if you have this problem with it, that I find it completely uh, baffling that they put the headphone jack where they did on that thing because it's always hard to get to. Yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. No. It's really- you know, of, of all things that Apple does, right? So, but on the front, it's like, oh, maybe I won't just hide this thing off in a shelf somewhere, but I never <laughs> see it. You know, I'll actually put it in front of me since I have accessible USBs. You know, that would be nice. So, but technically one more USB, um, you know, slash one more Thunderbolt port, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, mm-hmm. so and that, if you get the um, M4, if you get the M4 Mac Pro, uh, they're the, they're Thunderbolt 5s. So okay. they're so they're like double the speed oh, if yeah. you need that. I am back. unaware of the 5s. I, I yes. think 3 is anything that we use right now in, in our mm-hmm. workflows. So. Probably, yeah. probably anything that runs five that I probably not, but it, it it does make it a little more future proof. But you figure that, and they did um, just like they did with the IMAX on Monday. It starts off at sixteen gigs of RAM now. Yes, I like that. I like finally, that. finally. Um, so because I was just you know every once in a while I am hitting some RAM ceiling. Um, oddly with web browsers loading everything, <laughs> you know, no, um, sense, yeah. and I use 16, 16 has been my, my de facto for, for a, a while now. Uh, so it may be time to kind of update that to the 24. So, uh, no, it, it, it seems relatively affordable. Like it, it does seem like kind of, uh, uh, that low end you were talking about starting with the 16 seems, seems like it'd be fine if you're going from, you know, like we are from like a Mac mini M1, for instance. I, I can't say that. Um, I, I know I'm not hitting the ceiling on anything performance wise that I think I need one of these things, um, but it may be good for a nice step upgrade. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, if you're in an FM1 kind of territory for something like this. So or even if you still have an Intel chip. Oh, you know, if you have an Intel chip, this is definitely worth considering at this point. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's still 
and I, I'm going around six hundred dollars for an entry level. Sure, I mean that's so, that's good. That's, and comparatively, to, compa comparatively, that is what we pay for. Uh, we have those NUC computers that are um, they're actually mm -hmm. ninth generation Intel's, and that's mm -hmm. about what they run still. Uh, and, the, and they're like the perfect thing that we need. They do what we need. We can put an NVIDIA card into them. Um, so if, if you have a workflow that doesn't need vMix like we do on a PC, like it, it's actually very comparable. And I'm sure this thing, you know, if you're doing something, uh, uh, you know, performance comparative uh, is going to shred that thing in comparison. Right. Um, Katie, uh, you know, as a, a you're, I think you're in the same boat, uh, Mac mini. Love. We, we we basically have both the same computers, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> like yes. We're just in the same cycle. Yeah, the upgrade cycle. Yes, yes. I have it. Yes. I, are, we, are, you, are we really looking for an upgrade at this point? Are you interested in the smaller form factor at the very least? Oh, I love how cute and little it is. <laughs> Do I have a real need right now? Probably not. Yeah. But it would be nice to be able to just like edit my photos and keep that over there and not so much of my friend in front of me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it's again it's Keep not a, it's there. not a need but it's kind of like a my apple care is up here in a few months and i was like okay is it time to upgrade because it's out of service and i don't want to be stuck without it because i don't know if you have this problem but when macs go on me they go they are like i am done you can't turn me on anymore and apple doesn't know why and i'm out of apple care right and i'd rather get ahead of it and buy one before i have to <laughs> Because nothing's worse than being mad about buying a new Mac because you were required to. You know, it used to be a thing of joy to unpack one of those. And now it's become a, damn it, I don't need this right now. <laughs> so, um, especially if you, it's it's very much required for your work. So, um, but at least they start fairly cheap though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, this is your entry level Mac. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, do, it it's only the computer. It doesn't include the monitor, the keyboard, or the mouse. No, but we're recycling those. Hell, you know. Yeah, exactly. Katie's so if you have that already. Katie's got a sweet new monitor over there. She could just swap out, right? Yeah, especially, or, you it's, know what? I hate that. A cheap TV. Yeah. With the HDMI port. Maybe for your old one. There you go, Katie. You need the new one so you can put the other one on your TV so you can just stream everything. Yeah, we well, I, I was I was using my Samsung TV for my second monitor. Oh, okay. That's why I had to change out from this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> it was incredible. It worked really well. It just mm. the color was off. So mm -hmm. the photo editing was always back over here. Uh, but yes, I did that. So don't yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a very similar issue. Uh Missy took my monitor because it matched the other one and she wanted them to match for her with the rig. But now I have like it, it is god awful for trying to edit video on that thing, and I have to pull it off and look at it on my phone and everything like that. My workflow is so messed up right now. Uh, so, but yeah. Also, one thing I do want to mention that they did make an update for. Mm. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to, the, the chip would and everything else would choke on it, mm. but that thing will drive three displays, <gasps> three external displays. Hello. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm maxed the out of two right now. Yeah, the plain M4, mm. two displays with up to 6K. At mm -hmm. 60 hertz, and then one additional one either at 5K over Thunderbolt or 4K over HDMI. Oh, I'm not even close to that. Sorry. But if you get the M4 Pro, it can do three displays 6K. Okay. Over okay. Thunderbolt or HDMI. Well, I was even, um, I had the two displays and I was going to put a third one up for a reference monitor if I could. Mm -hmm. And I was going to get a Thunderbolt. I think I have a Thunderbolt output, uh, one of the Ultra Studios. Uh, that they're like, there's something like 60 bucks. I think, um, if you're interested in one, if you need to push something that's like for video, that is just going to push the video you're editing out into a display. Um, like they're perfect for something like that. And then you're just using a Thunderbolt port at that point. Uh, and, and don't have to worry about the extra HDMI. If you need something very specific for that, it's not going to turn into your desktop, but it, it, it'll function in, in a different way too. So, um, awesome. Uh, other than that, let's take with the Apple stuff. Uh, of course, the uh, do, 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 what were we, 17.1 uh, came out on uh, Monday. 18.1, 18. 18. excuse me. No, no. I was looking at some old Apple devices, but uh, <laughs> Apple Intelligence is a part of that. It's in there. I did update my desktop computer as well, so I can get those uh, services over there too and, and, and seeing where it goes. Nothing is functionally kind of popped up for me uh, the one thing i did notice because honestly when i was having trouble with my watch i did i did download the public beta since it was like thursday so i figured any big issues 
wouldn't be an issue. Uh, let me see if that pops up here because I, I noticed like right off the bat, I did get the summaries for my notifications. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Let me do this here real quick. Uh, we'll throw this over here. Boom. And uh, yeah, you can get the summaries for sure. Uh, so like, you know, for instance, like my, my wise camera says multiple people detected in the office cam and others within, you know, uh, the latest at such and such time. There's summaries for uh, your business um, kind of situation. Uh, be careful because one of these came up and and I was messaging with a promoter on Saturday for an event here. Corey Brown expresses feelings for 2PW. Mike Law to remain champion. And this is all comments on posts for some of the wrestling uh, pages that we're attached to, right? Uh, so, and, and you go in there and it's going to break it down to to the actual um, uh, messages that are going on there. And, and again, I had something like this where I'm messaging with a promoter and he's telling me about how there's cancellations. Um, like some of the wrestlers had canceled on them that day of. And, and the summary came up, APWF show canceled. And I was like, what? And I pulled it up. That's what it interpreted things as a summary based on what he was saying in the message. So again, you, you, you can, you're open to potential misinterpretations. Take it with a grain of salt and, and always click that thing and drop it down. Now, how do you know that it's a summary instead of a, a, a proper message? When you look into that, um, let me get back to one of these. You see this little um, icon here. It's a little arrow with like looks like kind of a, a text lines and, and a little arrow that goes underneath. So that's going to be your your summarize indicator there if you have multiple things. And usually it's when you have multiple messages stacked for especially a messaging app or something like that, it's going to be a big thing there. So uh, my podcasts are, are are summarized as well. <laughs> you know uh, about the uh, the OG Bloodline gets back together on Raw for WWE. Fish Without Bait episode four forty three is out. You know, and and you look under there's uh, uh, that episode of Fish Without Bait, and then the busted open uh, is is new according to the podcast and things like that. So so that's one way that that Apple Intelligence is going to be doing something for you. Siri is definitely doing more. I've been trying to ask it more in intricate questions, and it's at least reading Wikipedia to me and to ask me if it wants me to keep reading and things like that and doing more comparative things. It's not as perfect as doing like maybe a Google or chat GPT search uh, with voice, but it has been a little bit more to it. Um, and it does have that full screen uh, rainbow shimmer thing go on, which is looks really great when you're driving down the road at night uh, on a car play. <laughs> so... Um, so that's, that's what's stuck out for me so far. Have you guys installed it and have you poked at any of the Apple intelligence things so far? I changed the look of mine. Oh yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. I customized. Yeah. I did the whole customize the, um, pop out, like when you hold down the screen edit and I'm customizing my phone and the way it looks mm -hmm. and I switched it to dark mode and I just love the look of the apps. And then mm -hmm. you can change these to any color, you know, depending on your background. I'm, I'm covering how many notifications I have at the bottom because I don't want anybody to have, you know, just die to see them. Yeah, yeah, um, sugar warning. Me, <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to show you this. Um, but <laughs> like, this is, I love this. And then you have the option to either make them small or large. When you go to large, you lose the words, like underneath all the apps mm -hmm. or like the names of the folders, which I love because then this is like the basic, remember how like basic picture iPhone? Mm -hmm. That's what I like. And, um, I can't believe, I just, I, it's, it's been less like overwhelming to look at without all the little words underneath the apps and underneath the folders. So I, I very much like that. Um, yeah, what about you, Dave? What about you, Dave? Well, I, I'm going to get on my soapbox here a little oh, bit. Here we that, go. Oh no. Okay. So I can't use it on my phone. That's not the soapbox. Oh, okay. Cause I have a 13. I have okay. a 13. Okay. I understand. No you problem. have to have a 15. I'm, I'm, we're 15 not trying days. to phone shame you here. No. It's pre it's a perfectly adequate. <laughs> I, I think my mother is on an 11 or something like that. So, you know, perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did update Ruth's phone and our new iPad, mm -hmm. which both can run Apple intelligence. I updated it and I'm like, okay, first thing I tried was the photo app because now it has erased stuff in the photo app. So I said, okay, well, here's a picture, and let's see if I can erase this. You circle the thing in the background, or you just kind of scrub your finger over, and it does a pretty good job, you know, in terms of, you know, deleting stuff that you want out of a picture. And I said, okay, now I'm, I'm pretty positive about that. You know, that's not too bad. Yeah, you see, you, click, you can just click erase it. First time you use it after download cleanup. Oh, okay, okay, I, I'm working on that now. And then you can just kind of, you know, like if you want to get rid of the, uh, yellow thing over it 
a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried that out on a couple of pictures, and you know, like I said, I'm pleased with it. It, you know, especially for something I know it's been out, but for a new feature, it works pretty good. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, well, I want to try the text part. Yeah, see, so if you just kind of, and you can see where the mat, and then it'll. There you go. And the light goes away. Yeah. How about that? So it, and when you put your finger over, it kind of shimmers to show what you're selecting there. Mm-hmm. And you can actually just circle something also. <laughs> okay. Now it got weird. Oh, oh that was it. it working on it. That's oh, it. That's processing. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. A little bit of or like if you have that. like a, a, like an object, mm-hmm. let's say in a group picture and you have a, you can just circle that object. Like completely. Just saying, this guy, this guy, maybe I didn't want in here since I get, didn't yeah. get them entirely. Can work on that. Oh no, it did not work well. Yeah. His head well, like is, I said, it 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 doesn't work. It's not perfectly. perfect, and and there's a lot of lines in here, so it's kind of hard to track the yeah. person. So, but then I was trying to do use the text mm-hmm. to see because you can do, like I said, beyond the summary, mm-hmm. it does have, and this is built into Apple, so this isn't Chat GBT. If you're typing something, you can say, okay, uh, suggest improvements, mm-hmm. or summarize this for me, or make it a bullet point. Or rewrite it in these three different tones. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm like, I'm not getting the option. My first thought is, well, I have devices which aren't Apple intelligence ready. Mm -hmm. So do I have to have all my, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm trying to look online. It says, oh, after you download it, you have to go to settings, go to Siri and Apple intelligence, get on the wait list wait a certain amount of time and then you'll be you'll be allowed to get it and then you can opt in how do i know if i'm on the wait list uh well if you have if you go to settings mm-hmm. i'm in it now I'm in the okay i see it's on you're already on okay so you're through it yeah but after you update it to 18.1 you have to go into Siri and a- Apple Intelligence, okay. get on the wait list. Okay. It then pro- it, I think what it does, it looks and sees if you can actually run it or not. Yes. And then you have to then activate it. Okay. Which All right. They did not explain that. No, they did not. Very clearly. Nope. That's my soapbox. It's just a complete. Now, like I said, the, the fact that you can highlight some text and say things like, okay, Rewrite this in a friendly tone or rewrite this in a professional tone Mm -hmm. and it'll do it. And that's on device because in 18.2, which is hopefully due out by the end of the year, that's when you're going to get chat GPT integrated with Siri Mm -hmm. and that's in beta now. So Siri, it looks different. There is, it's better, Mm -hmm. but it's still not where they showed it at WWDC. No, it's going to become in the along. summer. It's going to become yeah. long. Um, yeah. There, there is interesting like in, in photos. I, I, I think I had asked it to, you know, there was a suggestion of trying to. Um, God, I, I, I can't, I can't remember. It was just like I, I was playing with like, like. I was trying to find pictures of Missy with a hat. And then it's like, do you want to make a thing you know, like a movie thing out of this? Kind of mm-hmm. like what Google photos does. And there's a whole like animation thing that happens to that. And it brings it together. Um, you know, other things I'm noticing, like, you know, uh, Katie and I had a, had a messaging exchange earlier today and you know, where she's giving me some advice and stuff. And I noticed that has a little thank you for understanding as a response that's coming up now. Uh, when it mm-hmm. pops up, so, you know, things like, like kind of like, like that feels like it's bringing a little bit of what we're used to of like the, the AI responses that that we've seen in Gmail for a while, for instance, right? Um, right. In in email, if you use Apple Mail, that's supposed to be a little more integrated for that. You do have the cleanup tools, uh, is my understanding too. Um, the writing cleanup tools and things like that. Um, you can go into. Um, you know, I, I, I want to. I I've seen the button to record a conversation, but I did it while I was ordering pizza today, so I figured I shouldn't try that yet. Uh, so, but man, that option is very interesting to me because I don't know how many times I take a business call and wish it was a zoom so I could do an AI, uh, summary of the mm-hmm. thing. But the next time I, oh man, I had a business call today. I really should have done it too. I was a little preoccupied. Um, but the idea is like, Hey, there's going to be a thing. I'd love to hear, like, does the person on the other end hear a tone? Um, when, when that happens or something like that, right. obviously we'd be like, Hey, I'm going to use my AI, AI thing. Is that okay? Move on with that, you know, kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that is very interesting to me because it's supposed to be able to transcribe it and summarize it and stick it into your uh, Apple Notes. So that is that that seems like a fantastic um, um, extension there. Uh, also, you know, obviously could be used in very interesting ways as well. Uh, but uh, but no, I think that, that that's a that's a nice upgrade for something like that. Yeah. So and, and it is baby steps, and mm-hmm. just like how Apple does things most of the time, they get, they don't say they don't go deep into the technology for the average user. They're more of here's what you can do with it. Similar to when Apple Pay came out. They didn't say, you have an NFC reader that can do this, this, this. They said, uh, double click your side button, hold it to the device, and then either face ID or thumb, depending on what you have, and you can use a securely use a payment. Mm-hmm. You know, so they didn't explain that it was more of for the average person what they need to use. So, yeah, like I said, it's going to be doled out little at a but time. That gives you a reason to be on all those nine to five Macs and Mac words to learn all the tricks. So, um, yeah, a lot of stuff happening there. Like I said, you mentioned the Mac minis. Or, yeah, the Mac. What was it? IMAX came out yesterday. Oh, this was a feature <coughs> that surprised me. And this may not have been new to 17 or God, 18.1. Um, but in my discovery, because uh, Missy. Uh, uh, has a fun, uh, you know, has d- discovered the whole like, you know, you can you can create a do not disturb, customize a do not disturb to what apps and what people will respond. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was creating some for our trip next week uh, of exactly who, you know, I don't, you know, I, I you know, I want to be in a full, I was like, oh no, I don't want anybody to be able to message me, but also I still have an app for where I'm going that I want the notifications to come through, Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, I can just kind of I can narrow this down and, you know, say like, hey, you're going to take all the Disney apps and put it in there. So you already have some that are kind of developed in here. If you look into uh, uh, something like like your 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 you know focus and everything on, on your phone as it is, if you have the 18. Right. Um, so if you go in here and do 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 do. There's the button. Um, you go in here. So like I created one for Disney, for instance. Right. And if you go in there uh, and do the settings again, like you have like, OK, I got my people that I, I usually cool. It's not a pain and they're they're messaging me. And then my apps are literally just like the hotels, the hotel apps and the Disney apps. Right. So like that is a full vacation mode situation there. Right. Uh, the other fun thing I got this I, I discovered was you can create different um you know, looks and everything. Like currently, for instance, this is what it looks like on my phone now, right? It's a starry night thing, you know, I have the, you know, the weather and it reacts to something like that. And, but if I go in here and go to my focuses and let's say I go to, uh, uh, like driving has it when it comes on automatically, I've changed the entire look of the thing. Uh, my lock screen, let's see if it pulls up my lock screen here. When it comes up like it's a nice you know kind of motif mm. to it that's and, and that was a suggested picture which reminds me i need to show you the suggested pictures that come up with some of these too uh because they're kind of hilarious uh let's see if you do the uh let's say sleep is another one that i've been trying to do uh and i i set these up all last night so this is kind of new here right um oh i thought i thought sleep had a good one uh I th- which, which one well, has, you're looking which at one that, has that, my dog these, on it <laughs> these ones have been around for a little bit okay it's so ones like this yeah. because sleep you can actually have it all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um because my sleep mode comes on i have it set up where it comes on i set i set a sleep and the wake time mm-hmm. um i think it's under the help app the health app, and you can set it up per day. So if you're like, well, Wednesday I always go in early, and or Thursday I can sleep in a little bit, and the weekend I don't want an alarm. You can do all that, and it'll go into sleep mode automatically after a certain time. Mm-hmm. So you won't have, you know, let's say, oh, I don't know, you're part of a Facebook Messenger chat mm-hmm. that gets very active. Yep, and you can say, oh, I'm in sleep mode. No messages, no, you know, weird buzzing at three in the morning type thing. And it, it's it's highly recommended. I've been using it for a while, actually. So this is the thing. So 
<coughs> when you go into the thing, there's actually it takes your pictures and makes create some suggestions for wallpapers from the from your your camera roll. Uh, uh, I thought you guys would get a kick out of some of these selections. Katie, you're in here. Uh, there's 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 what I got my dog from, and there's Katie. It looks like that looks like a cutout from when we were at Universal last year, perhaps. Uh, and then it looks like it. And then there's Riz just pointing at something, but I think it cut off his hand. Uh, so yeah, there you. I don't know what's going. You have your iPhone in your. <laughs> I don't know what this picture is. Uh, and then the other one uh, was this one. I love uh, Bradley, who we know from my wrestling and gym from Ooh. Fishing Without Bait. Where he they look nice though, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And then that looks like probably a picture from. Um, uh, God, what what town is that? <laughs> Who knows? No idea. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not sure why they <laughs> made Jim Green, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's that, Katie? I said Bradley. I'm just laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, it was the first one I noticed. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so uh, definitely worth getting in there and, and playing with those. I, I like those because it does tell you like what mode you're on because sometimes I, I'm like, oh, I'm still on Do Not Disturb. I didn't go to the sleep mode yet or something like that. And it does kind of like like set tones. You know what I mean? I, like I like the color tones. Um, you know, like, oh, I'm in this mode. It, it, it's like another trigger for you if you're if you're uh, uh, need that kind of uh, AV, um, you know, reaction and things like that. Now, how do I turn off my Do Not Disturb? There we go. Um, anyways, Katie, you have a couple of things here I know we don't want to touch on before we get out of here. Um, you want to go goose? Go, go, ghost, 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 ghost. Okay. Ghost. Oh. It's, it's what's happening. It's what happens. It's how it's Halloween season. Mm -hmm. Um, so my friend Dominique Murray, um, she has a, a studio down in Southside and she's done a lot of photos and things for us. And she asked me and one of my friends, Chelsea, if we could do a photo shoot with her because it's the ghost trend where everybody does the ghost mm -hmm. things as ghosts. And then she, um, dress up as like, so if this is the full experience, like if you were to go to her, you're getting the full experience. Like there's the, uh, the glam touches, like from, fr from makeup to fresh steam sheets, we make sure they're picture perfect, never detailed guided posing. Like you can see that catch the vibe from every angle, same day gallery reveal. <laughs> wait, 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 that, that, that ghost that's is showing sexy. some leg over there. Yeah. That's a <laughs> sexy ghost. Yes. So it was, it was so much fun. And like, I, I can't wait till she, the, there's the photo in the background of me with the, it's like false lashes with my pink sunglasses down. Mm -hmm. and it's the, one of the greatest photos I've ever been in, in my life. Um, because it just, it was so silly and it was so much fun, but yeah, we just stuck false eyelashes on the outside of a sheet to make them <laughs> a glamour ghost. Well, and this is Dominique Murray on, uh, on Facebook, right? Murray, Murray, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. She's, she's fantastic. And, um, but yeah, we've been seeing a lot of this trend popping up, so there's still time. There's still time. It's not, it's not Halloween yet. We got till Thursday. Is so if your job's interesting, mm -hmm. dude is a ghost. Uh, uh, the Statue of Liberty has a ghost costume i saw which is i've never I, I don't think we've ever done that before right mm -mm. wow Spooky. awesome uh you have another celebration here as well right yeah oh this is fun uh so there is a 50 hello kitty turned 50 this year which mm -hmm. you probably i've probably mentioned before hopefully um but she's doing a collab with wet and wild makeup which is very exciting because uh, Wet n Wild is something that is very accessible. They have it at Walmart. You know, anybody can buy it. It's not like sometimes you do these fancy high end things and you're like, oh, I wish I could get. But I did order some and it's like, there's the makeup case. And I love it. It's adorable. And like, I, <laughs> this is my awesome, very awesome thing that I'm excited about. So it sits flat like this and it's mm. open. So you're not like, oh, I got to dig in here. And then they also have, I have it on the floor. It's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> as I come back, uh, the brushes. I had to buy those because they're cute and functional. And then, you know, like pencils, eyeliner, lip liner, lip gloss, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff there uh, makeup wise. And it's actually pretty good. Like it's, I don't know. Sometimes you're like, Oh, I, you know, get to spend X amount of money. They're really good products. Um, what my has been around, like I said, forever. And, um, yes, very excited about it. Um, did get it. Look at it. It's got blushes, shimmer. Um, my friend Chelsea, who was also uh, the ghost, uh, very much bought um, a lot of the other um, eyeshadows and lip liners and, or lipsticks and uh, recommends them too. So I was very excited about that. And I ordered it from Walmart and uh, just drove through and they were like, here's your bag. So yes, Walmart <laughs> Plus also is amazing. 
There you go. Hey, those are those are pretty cheap. They're they're about eight eight dollars to, to like seventeen dollars uh, on average mm-hmm. there. So um, that's uh, I think relatively affordable as far as makeup goes in my limited yes. experience. <laughs> so yeah. in, my, in my limited experience, uh, so. Um, awesome. I can finally get the sleeping cat in the picture. There you go. Yeah, I mm. saw what you were leaning over. I'm like, oh, there's a cat there. Hello. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you did have. A, we did, I, I'm sorry, I missed the apple thing when we we're doing the apple bunch of things. Uh, what, what is the? What was this that you discovered? Beep scene stacks. Is this new? I didn't know if this was new. Um, I, I've, so- av- I've avoided it. <laughs> I love it. I didn't. I was like, I'm gonna hate this thing. And I love it. So part of like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes my job requires me to do a lot of screenshots, for example, and that absolutely kills my whole desktop across all monitors, 18,000 monitors. Um, it's, it's a sea of screenshots. And this stacks things with like items. Like for example, yes, I still have the 8,000 screenshots, but they're stacked and they're not taking up the like overwhelming me where I can't even look through them because there's so many. But yes, I, I love it. It looks so much cleaner. It's not, you know, my images are stacked, my documents are stacked, my spreadsheets are stacked, and you can change how they, um, you know, how they're stacked, what the order looks like. Hmm. Um, which I, 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 like I said, I was like, ooh, what's this? And I just turned so, it on today, and I love it. And I'm it's curious. like I said, it's easier. So I got a little bit of mess, and it's different from computer to computer. You right click, and then uh, you do use stacks, and ah! oh. <laughs> Okay. Right? Uh, like, oh, and then it just like oh, it's just like a it flushes out. Oh mm-hmm. wow, this is okay. I unfortunately have a lot of folders that shouldn't be here anymore. <laughs> the folder projects, but uh, yeah, that is insanely helpful. That's fantastic. It, right? know, they've had that for a little bit of time because mm-hmm. when my iMac was still up and running, mm-hmm. um, for screenshots, that was great. Because, oh, yeah. like I said, you wouldn't, they wouldn't be scattered, all your screenshots in one stack. Yep, yep. And, and unfortunately, since it's so all it in, it easy to if it's out. all in iCloud, that means I have screenshots from every computer on every computer. So, and one of the computers is an old MacBook Pro that we do the DVDs on from, like, 2013. So, it gets a little sketchy. Uh, so, um, that's awesome. The stacks. Stack them up. Stack them up. Awesome. Guys, it's been a good hour with you. An awesome hour, if you will, uh, here for the last show of October. Uh, we're a couple days out from Halloween. Hope everybody's going to stay safe out there. Uh, myself, I'll be doing an outdoor, <laughs> um, but apparently it's warm enough now. Uh, where do we, we'll be doing a Halloween show up in lower Burl at, uh, a, a amazing, uh, videographer, uh, Aaron Woods, who comes and does stuff. I, I've, I've been looking at his, uh, his wedding stuff. It's incredible. Uh, what he's been doing uh, with video out there. So um, so I guess this is a Halloween party, and we're going to have a fun wrestling show. We'll be live streaming it on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, and uh, we had a lot of fun. I know last year there was like something of a uh, costume battle royal that we had a blast with when we did Thursday Night Fights. Uh, so so looking forward to see what uh, what's coming out from this, too. So, uh, Katie, do you have any big Halloween plans? I'm going to go see my nieces and nephew. Um, I did... Aww. Shout out to Amazon. Um, my niece asked me to be Poison Ivy, and it's a cartoon ver- version of Poison Ivy that um, there was no costume for, and I had to make sure it was family friendly. And mm-hmm. I ordered all the bits and pieces, and I think I'm good to go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, this was an issue we were talking about here. Like, mm-hmm. how do you how do you do not overly like less Uma Thurman, <laughs> right, and more more uh, Batman the Animated Series. Uh, situation yes so mm-hmm. yes not harley not not harley quinn in poison ivy version right well yes but not there's a cartoonier version yes. like a, i don't know if she found it so she's yes she is harley quinn and i am <laughs> awesome looking forward to pictures let's see how that turns out there what about you potter um not really anything planned plan but you know uh we're gonna pick up some candy just in case anyone comes by mm-hmm. uh probably won't so that means we're gonna eat it but so mm. that's why we make sure we make sure we get things we like it's permission to buy candy for ourselves night yeah hey well there's a nice live stream you can join uh on on uh, on, 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 <laughs> on thursday oh, yeah, we night. do we will <laughs> there you go thank you guys so much um at sorgatron on the social medias and you can see all the behind the scenes of uh we had some productions over the weekend out in Johnstown, PA for APWF. That's over on, uh, that's actually on the live stream. You can go watch that show right now for free over at IndieWrestling.us's YouTube and uh, network 
uh, streams as well. And uh, like I said, no no uh, proper show for the next two weeks. So we're going to try and get something in the feed, but I cannot promise anything at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, unless I go buy from like a phone at Disney. Uh, so, um, but uh, before then, there is a very big date. Next Tuesday is a very important date. I just want to say an apolitical, please go vote, no matter what your beliefs are and stuff. Just making sure you are represented here uh, for what's uh, coming up here in the election is a big one. And uh, I hope you get to, get to uh, uh, have your voice heard uh, as far as that goes. So, and everybody be safe out there for that as well. Uh, hopefully you've got, and, and a lot of places have advanced voting, so you don't have to do it and be part of what could be a madhouse on Tuesday. Uh, get it out of the way, and um, it relieves a lot of stress. I sub- I feel like I voted about a month ago. I know that's not completely true, but it was almost a month ago that I, I received and submitted my ballot and didn't have to worry about it and can go off and have a peace of mind that that's done with um, in my travels. So uh, highly, highly, highly recommend that. Um, and again, I believe, you know, you can still just participate in that, pick one up, um, you know, Penn State to State. I know Pennsylvania has some early validating things. I believe happening this weekend that you can be a part of. Check your local uh, there's voting website. There's some website, I'm sure, that should be on top of my head right now. Thank you, everybody. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.